united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. All right, good morning. This is Joe Williams, Pastor Joe Williams from Westside Community Church. And once again, it's great to have you on the program United with Christ. Um, for the last two months, uh, we've been going through various countries and we've been looking at the fascinating uh, world of the persecuted church. And, and I don't say that as it's fascinating in just kind of a morbid sense of, uh, of interest, but fascinating in the respect that we are all part of the body of Christ. And I say this each week when we come on, and I want to continue to remind you that each of these cultures, each of these people groups all over the world, they need our prayers. We need to know more about them. And we need to concentrate specifically on how can we uh, support them as they follow Jesus Christ. And, and every time I study or read about a different group, um, it convicts me, it inspires me. And uh, this morning, we're going to look at a country uh, that a lot of you uh, probably have met people from this particular nation. It's the nation of Nigeria, uh, a fascinating country. But before we go any further into that, I want to make sure that we don't leave out something very important. Uh, as you know, it's going to be uh, KCSC's um, uh, uh, 30th year in existence, uh, Channel uh, 38's, and they're going to celebrate it in a special way next week. And let me, let me tell you a little more about it. Uh, uh, next Thursday, the 12th at 7 p.m., uh, they will be having a special concert featuring Paul Wilbur, and it'll be at the Harvest Christian Center. And if you don't know where that's at, it's 1345 New Harvest Place. Wonderful church right out there on the west side of town, right close to the interstate. You can see it. Uh, it'll be at 7 o'clock, but I understand you can get there earlier. It's uh, $10 in advance and uh, $12 at the door. And uh, we want to fill it up. I know that my wife and I intend to go. And then the very next day on Friday the 13th, and we're not superstitious here. We know the Lord's in control of every day and date, right? Uh, there's going to be a gala anniversary dinner at the Wyndham at 630. And uh, if you want to know more about that, you can go online or you can con uh, contact people here at the television station. But we really want people to support uh, this television station here and uh, support us as brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, let's pray. And then we're going to get to Nigeria and, and see what God's doing there. Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Um, Lord, we ask, Father, that every nation, every group that we look at, every people that we look at, Lord, uh, that we not look at them like we're doing some kind of geographic study, Lord, but that... Uh, we're looking at brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world and we're all part of the body of Christ and uh, how much we love them and we hurt when they hurt and we celebrate when they celebrate. And Lord, please help us uh, the rest of this morning during this program to learn more about them, to appreciate them and to put our prayers in a powerful way towards uh, supporting these groups of people. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, let me start out in a little bit different way uh, this morning than I normally have. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm not a huge world traveler. The last few years of my life, I've gotten to travel a little bit more and, and gone to, to China and India and Africa, but not for long extended periods of time. But when I have met people from these different places in the world, uh, over there and then here in the United States, um, the more interested I am. And in particular, Nigeria, here in El Paso, there are a lot of people from Nigeria who live in El Paso. Uh, a lot of Christians that I've met are, are from Nigeria. And uh, it was very enlightening this week to do a little bit of uh, research. And uh, this morning what I'd like to do is if, if you have friends who are from Nigeria, or maybe you're Nigerian, you're watching, I want you uh, to, in particular, 
uh, be praying for God to send a revival to Nigeria, especially to the people in uh, the Christians who are in central and northern Nigeria who are being persecuted. Uh, I, I tell you this every time we have a program, I, I'm not an expert on Nigeria. Uh, and so I, I hopefully I will not uh, uh, give you any misinformation about history and things like that. It's not a history program. Sometimes I think I, I give you too much background, but I just think that all these nations are very fascinating and the people that are in them. And uh, again, I, I want you to think of them as, as real people and not just somebody who's, who's far away. In particular, uh, Nigeria is a, a, a nation that is the largest in population of any nation in Africa. And I didn't know that until I uh, began to study. You know, last week we talked about uh, Algeria and how in uh, geography it is the largest nation in Africa. The Sudan used to be the largest and then they had the civil war and they split and now it's a little bit smaller. Uh, but uh, Nigeria is not a very large nation in geography, but it has... Uh, according to what I read, about uh, 190 million people. So they're, they're pushing 200 million people and will surpass that pretty soon. Uh, the demographics that I read, uh, they have a large uh, uh, group of people under 30 years old and people under 20 years old. Uh, and like a lot of developing nations, they have just a, a, a tremendous amount of potential and young people who are who are trying to overcome a lot of poverty. It is a developing nation. But at the same time, um, if you meet people from Nigeria, one of the first uh, things that I think about are, are hardworking people uh, in the medical industry. I've met all kinds of, of doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, anesthesia, uh, anesthesiologists, if I can pronounce it, uh, people in education, people in business, uh, people even in, in uh, uh, local governments in America who have been educated and have worked hard and, and come to America. And when you speak to them, a lot of times uh, you're not sure what to ask and what's appropriate. And as I have been reading and studying here, um, it, it makes things come alive to me. Uh, because when you meet people from other parts of the world who've come to America, and even though we are certainly uh, not a a perfect nation and we have skeletons in our own closet and we're we're struggling to follow Christ here you realize how blessed and fortunate we are here in America because these people from various nations are coming here because uh, they have a particular opportunity that they would not have in their nation but then at the same time we don't want to forget where people have come from right and and what's going on in these people's lives and and, uh, and see how we can help them. Let me tell you a little bit more about Nigeria, and uh, then we'll look at the, uh, the people in Nigeria right now in the persecuted church. Um, I didn't read for you a, a bunch of scripture this morning. Uh, I, I read it as an introduction every, uh, every time we, uh, we come to talk about these nations. This morning, I want to spend a little more time on the actual persecuted church, and maybe uh, on another week, I can... Uh, have some people come in from Nigeria and talk about the struggles and the opportunities that there are in Nigeria right now for Christians. Uh, but, but right now, I'll give you what, what I know. All right? um, there are uh, three major ethnic groups of the almost 200 million people. Uh, they're the, the Hasu, and if I mispronounce the name, you'll have to forgive me, please. Uh, that would be the largest ethnic group. There are over 200 tribes uh, in Nigeria, 200 tribes, uh, dozens and dozens of distinct languages and even more dialects than that. Uh, there's the, the Yoruba people. Uh, and then uh, there's the Igbo people. Those would be most of the time what I read. I read, looked at several different websites and uh, uh, all of them said that those were the three major groups. In fact, there is a division almost 50-50 between Muslims, people who follow Islam, and people who would be considered Christian. Now, we know that just because you call yourself a Christian doesn't mean you're a Christian. And then we know that in Christianity, under the, the, the tent of Christianity, all of us are to be following Jesus. But in Nigeria, just like in America, it's a very diverse place, and it's very complicated. Um, so I'm going to kind of weave a, a, an explanation this morning back and forth with history and uh, today, 
so that you'll get a little bit better picture of what's happening. Um, there's even a movement today in Nigeria and in other places, and even in America, for people to go backwards in a way. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but to not look at what we would call the uh, major monotheistic religions. And for those three that were monotheistic, that are the major world religions, would be Christianity, the largest, and then Islam. And then another one that's not very large, but it's so famous because the other two kind of emerged from that, uh, would be Judaism. All right? And then the other really large major religion, but it is polytheistic, would be the Hindu religion or the various Hinduistic religions, and we studied that. Uh, but in Nigeria, long before there were uh, Western religions, is what we would call it, even though I, I don't really call them Western religions, but long before Christianity arrived, all right, um, uh, with uh, the Europeans, uh, and long before Islam came. A lot of people like to think of Islam as being the native religion of Africa, but, it, but it's not. In fact, it, it came into being, if you remember, uh, after, about 600 years after Christianity is when Islam began to emerge and, and spread over the African continent. So the native religions, and, and I, I read a little bit about this, and, and each of the tribes have various ways of looking at their native religions. And there were different gods, gods who, who created the earth, gods of love, gods of, of all kinds of various aspects of life, real complicated traditions, uh, folklore, uh, and depending on which tribe, they would have a different way of looking at different gods. But there's a movement among some Nigerians to go back to that because they would think that that is more pure and native. And I would say that even in America, there are people who would go back to some of the, the old pagan religions before Christianity. And I would say we'd have one thing in common, whether you were from Africa or Asia, is that all of us have to ask ourselves, who is the true God? Right? And, and what happens to us after we die? What is our purpose in life? Uh, you know, my wife and I uh, watched the, uh, a new Christian movie, and now the name of it escapes me, but one of the, uh, uh, the neat lines is in the movie they would ask, um, who are you? Who are you? You know, and I asked that to a young man uh, last night. We were sitting at Waterbrook, and I said, who, who are you? We were just having a discussion. He goes, what do you mean, who am I? And I go, well, well what, how would you define yourself? And he began to talk about what he does and where he's from and his family and all that. And, and all those are important to us. But as a believer in Christ, no matter where you're from, when you ask who you're from and who are you, it doesn't matter what your language is, what your tribe is, or even your family. And I, I have pride in my family and, and pride in some of our history. But really, in reality, it's not my job. And even as much as I love being a father and a husband, the Bible tells us that the reality of who we are is who we are in Jesus Christ. All right? We are children of Jesus. We are children of the Lord. And we are adopted into the family of God. And we are to live our life and put Him first. Now, the reason I say that is one of the reasons why there is such persecution in Nigeria there are believers in Nigeria who have decided that they are going to put Jesus and they are going to be followers of Jesus. And you know, in the Middle East, it is it's very appropriate. And, and it's not that they're ashamed of being a Christian, but there is a lot of baggage, uh, bad baggage in some parts of the world about what a Christian is. There are people who've come in the name of Christ and, uh, and being Christians and have done uh, atrocities in different nations. And so a lot of times people will say, I am a follower of Jesus, of Isa. All right, I'm a follower of Jesus. So in Nigeria with the, the three major ethnic groups and then hundreds of other ethnic groups and all kinds of languages, the diversity that emerged long before the Europeans came, there wasn't Christianity and there wasn't Islam, but there were people who were searching all right? And if I, I looked at some of the history and there was all kinds of different kingdoms in, in uh, West Africa that overlapped each other. And it's a, it's a fascinating history. If you want to read it for yourself, you can. I won't try to uh, do an injustice to just give you a short overview even this morning. But as uh, Islam began to spread from North Africa down into 
uh, more into South and West Africa. In the North in particular, one of the tribes, the Fulani uh, tribes uh, and the Husaf tribes, they became Islamic in majority, and even today they still are. And there are three distinct regions, geographical regions, within Nigeria. Uh, and there uh, are the highlands, there are the savannas and the forests, and there are the mangroves and the swamps along with the, uh, with the coastal areas. And I, I don't want to jump around too much, but one of the reasons why this is important is in the north when the nomadic tribes came in who were Islamic, obviously those people converted over to Islam because Islam is a powerful religion, right? And especially if you happen to be uh, a, um, a nomadic tribe and a warlike tribe, it kind of fits together to conquer people and to, to get them to come to what you believe. And then in the south and towards the coast where the land was more fertile or in the, some of the highlands where it was more fertile and the population was more dense, uh, sadly, one of our legacies from the West was slavery. And there was slavery long before the Europeans came, but the particular type of slavery that came with the transatlantic slave trade uh, is not a legacy that we're very proud of in America, but it's, it's just the truth. And from what I've read, they think that over 3 million people uh, were sent over in slavery from the Nigerian area. It wouldn't have been called Nigeria at the time because there was different tribes and kingdoms that overlapped and, and waxed and waned at different times. But over 3 million people were sent to the New World, whether it was America or South America or, or Mexico or wherever they went, and, and many went to, to Europe even at that time. And some went to the, to the Middle East. There was already a slave trade before that time. But you think about it, over 3 million people and what I was reading, and this is very interesting, uh, that because of the slave trade, until the British abolished it officially in, in 1807, it disrupted the tribes. And tribes that already sometimes had, had wars together, it intensified the fighting all right, and the atrocities with each other because they would try to sell each other into slavery. When the British... Uh, thank goodness the Lord did an uh, abolitionist movement in Great Britain. Uh, and if you like to read about men like Wilbur Wilberforce, who was a, such a godly man and some of the other men with him who helped uh, get uh, slavery abolished in the British Empire, uh, they would have to patrol the coast off of Nigeria and other parts of West Africa, but in particular Nigeria, to stop the slave traders. But then in the middle of that, a lot of people who uh, were not uh, followers of Islam, they decided that they would become followers of Islam because in Islamic culture, and at least in Nigeria, uh, you could not sell another follower of Islam into slavery, at least in Nigeria. And so they said, you know what, I may not really believe it, but I'd rather do that than be a slave. Right? And then as the, the British uh, became... Uh, in control during the colonial times. Uh, they did from the 1800s all the way to the 1960s. They were, quote, a, it was, a, quote, a protectorate uh, of, uh, of Great Britain. And then I won't bore you with all the details, but there was civil wars and fighting amongst tribes and against the British, and uh, uh, the British gave them their freedom in Nigeria. Uh, there's been at least four republics in Nigeria since the 60s. So the governments have fought back and forth. There's been a lot of corruption. There's been a military dictatorship uh, in Nigeria. So there's been all kinds of infighting and killing and competition. In fact, one of the things that makes it difficult for true followers of Christ in Nigeria and in America, okay, is that Christians many times are caught between politics, all right? And we're, we're caught between materialistic goals of different people uh, ethnic groups, racism, all kinds of different things. When a Christian is supposed to be just following Christ, what are the two greatest commandments? Loving God and loving other people. Well, the same in Nigeria. So you had in the north, the majority, the vast majority, were followers of Islam. I looked at this, the statistics and 40-something percent of the people in Nigeria claimed to be followers of Islam and almost that many uh, claimed to be Christians, but some of them 
are all kinds of different Protestants. Uh, over 10% are Roman Catholic. Uh, and then even in Nigeria, there's a movement today, kind of uh, a, a westernized version of uh, a materialistic Christian movement. And I, I'm kind of blurring what that means. But in other words, uh, in parts of Africa now, there are pastors who are kind of like televangelists. And I'm on TV right now, so I'm not putting down everyone who's on TV that's an evangelist. But guys who are saying, if you give me money, if, uh, if you will touch a cloak that I have, uh, if uh, I send you something that I prayed over, you will become successful in business. You will get the woman or the man that you want. That kind of movement is sweeping over parts of Africa and in particular in Nigeria. So in some ways, that has a attacked Christianity from within in Nigeria and, and, and made it a little bit weaker. Um, one of the reasons why uh, Nigerians in America are, are so very well known is because they're such hardworking people and they've been successful. In Africa, I spoke to a, a few people from other parts of Africa and they both admired and they both were a little bit jealous of Nigerians because they would say they are great business people. They are very aggressive. They're very successful. That's why they do well in America. Well, you know, there's pros and cons against being uh, aggressive and hardworking. We know in America you can be aggressive and hardworking and get all the money and success that you want to obtain in America and still be miserable. There's a lot of people in America who've lived and died and become millionaires and they don't know Jesus Christ. And I think people in other parts of the world are learning that the hard way. Now let me specifically tell you uh, what's going on with the Christians. Some of you have heard the term Boko Haram, all right? That is a, uh, a terrorist group uh, that's kind of homegrown there uh, in Nigeria and in uh, a few other countries that are adjacent to Nigeria. And the translation of the word itself basically means against the West or against the teachings of the West. And so Boko Haram is a, an extreme Islamic terrorist group. And just a few years ago, especially starting in 2014, they were going into Christian villages or just to Christians' homes. They were burning hundreds, no exaggeration, hundreds of churches all over Nigeria have been burned, raised to the ground. People's homes burned and raised to the ground. Hundreds of young girls have been abducted in Nigeria. In fact, right now, according to Open Doors, Nigeria is the 12th most dangerous nation in the world. Think about that. The 12th most dangerous nation in the world to be a follower of Jesus because of all that's going on. And this is ironic because in the Constitution um, of Nigeria, people have freedom of religion. And in certain parts of Nigeria, especially in the South, where the majority of people uh, claim to follow Christ, you don't find all of that. But in the mid part of the country, and in especially in the North, people are fear of their lives constantly. Um, I get a magazine, and, and I want to encourage you, if you never subscribe to it, it's called Voice of the Martyrs. It is tremendously inspiring. And every time I read it, they talk about Nigeria. They talk about Nigeria and they talk about people in Nigeria who are following Christ and risking their lives. There was one teenage girl in particular that uh, in Voice of the Martyrs, they were looking for. She had been abducted uh, from her home and uh, she was 16 years old. And they found out that she was alive and they prayed for her and they got her back. And it was wonderful. Uh, I, I won't even say her name because it says that they... Uh, some people don't want to say the name because they're afraid she still lives there and they may come back to get her again. Uh, the most trafficked nation on the continent of Africa, ironically also, because it is in many ways an advanced nation, is from Nigeria. Uh, people from Nigeria, uh, especially young ladies, go all over the world many times and they are told they can get a job. Even when I was in China, I discovered that there were Nigerian ladies there, young ladies, who were told that there was a job waiting for them. And then once they get there, they're saying, no, there's really not a job. You can't go back to where you're going. And we're going to turn you into a prostitute. 
Uh, we're going to do, you're going to have to do whatever we say. So you're basically going to be a slave, a sex slave. All right. This is happening all over different parts of Africa, but in particular to our brothers and sisters in Christ in Nigeria and other places. This is where our hearts should break and we need to do the most we can. We need to talk to our government officials and make sure we un they understand that this is serious and, and we, we know that it's true and that it's happening and, and it needs to stop. Uh, we need to send money to different missionaries and groups uh, and churches in Nigeria and other places. And, and I don't want to be too blunt, but I'm not talking about mega churches. I'm talking about people that you research and you know that they need help to save these girls. Um, when Boko Haram came in, you probably read a few years ago uh, that hundreds of girls were abducted from different schools. And some of them never returned. Their parents never saw them again. Some of them were forced into marriages. They were raped and then they were, were married. Um, and, and they were too ashamed to go back to their villages. And some, as I said, have never been heard from again. This is happening all over the world, but particularly in Nigeria. And we need to pray for them and we need to make sure that we support the groups that go into some of the villages in the north uh, and in the central parts of the nation. And, uh, you know, I, I was reading uh, yesterday uh, two or three accounts of, of ladies who lost their husbands. Men came into the village. Uh, the uh, the Falunis came into the village, murdered the men and uh, absconded with the women and the young girls and how this one lady hid from the terrorists. And then when they left, her whole family was gone. You know, we need to make sure and do what the scripture tells us in Hebrews. And it says to almost in a way be at one with our brothers and sisters in Christ who are in prison. And some of these people literally are being held in prison in various parts of Africa and other parts of the world. If you find out about slavery, sexual slavery here in America, you need to report it. Uh, you need to not say, oh, that's a person's choice. No, many times it's not their choice. These are ladies who have been sent all over the world and uh, they're crying for help. And we need to make sure uh, that that we do everything as Christians to do that. We need to make sure, and, and I'm not getting off on a tangent here, guys. We need to make sure that things like pornography are things that we don't support because it hurts people all over the world. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Father in heaven, we thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Nigeria. We thank you for the Nigerians here in El Paso and all over America. Bless them and empower them. Lord, we ask you to just touch them and give them strength. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.